Salomon Ultra Glide, two months review. Hope you enjoyed that little uh, little sort of video montage, a few snippets of me messing about in the shoe, um, covering all sorts of different terrains, some wood, uh, woods, fields, sand, road, pavement, etc. All in this one here, the Ultra Glide. So to cut a long story short, am I pleased with the shoe after two months? Um, short answer is yes, but there are a few caveats, a few little points I need to talk about. The biggest sort of, uh, I guess, elephant in the room is, uh, which is what people are worried about, is the midsole. Um, they seem to, there seems to be a lot of chat on YouTube that uh, the midsole flattens out after 100 miles. I have to be completely transparent and honest right now. I have not done 100 miles in this shoe. Not that far off, but I haven't passed the 100 mile mark. So I can only give you what I know now. Uh, the midsole itself is still holding up. It is still, um, there is still some good cushion, good bounce, good, good comfort there. Uh, to me, it hasn't actually deadened out that much, but what has happened is the insole, the insole flattened out pretty much instantly uh, and it became paper thin. So I put, put a new insole, a much thicker one, very comfortable, and that's given a lot more life back into the shoe, which I guess you shouldn't have to do, but that's what I did do and it seemed to do the trick. Um, but in regards to the midsole itself, I would advise not to run too much on road because I think that's also another thing that will flatten out the midsole. So road, pavement, hard surfaces. This shoe is, is obviously, as it is, designed for trails. So stick to the trails as much as possible. Second thing that obviously, well, second thing that is concerning slightly is the width. So is the width. It's not, it's not the wider shoe. Uh, people have claimed that it is, it is wide and people have even compared it to an Ultra. It's certainly not. I would say, for me right now, I mean, I have wide feet, um, but I can wear these shoes up to about two hours without any sort of discomfort, uh, but I do have to wear thin socks. I would say for the majority, it should be okay, um, but if you do have got wide feet, I would probably just avoid the shoe um, because the, the overlays are quite strong uh, and it's, it does, does not necessarily taper it in, there is still some space up in the toe box. I mean, as you can see in my earlier reviews here, link above, there's my first impressions of view of the shoe. Um, which goes into more detail about this, but yeah, it's a little bit, a little bit snug on the width. And Salomon said that this is their widest one, so I, I haven't experienced any other shoes with Salomon, but I probably wouldn't want to either. So width is the other negative. And the last little sort of kind of negative point that I have is up here. So these are the, up here is where the, 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 the quick lacing system is supposed to sit. But unfortunately, and this has been noted before, I think Lloyd from Run for Adventures has said this, this little pocket is too low and this string, this uh, lacing system comes too high. And when it's tightened up, it's quite a hassle to stuff it all in this little tiny pocket up here. But that's it. Those are the only three sort of kind of gripes or kind of worries that I have and maybe other people have sort of talked about. The good points, and there are many, many good points. Um, it is a shoe that I keep looking forward to putting my foot back into, weirdly, for those sort of fun, shorter bursts on the trails. It is extremely lightweight. Um, it's in that lightweight feel with the bouncy midsole and great traction too. No issues with the traction. Um, really, it's worked sort of on fields and wet and you know slippery wood and things. Um, and then the overall lock lockdown. And I, I admit that I said it was quite snug, but the lockdown is great. This this lacing system, once you've got this tied in, it fits in really nicely and it just envelops your foot give a really comfortable wraparound feel and it just feels comfortable because you have a very nice decent amount of cushioning all around the heel collar here the tongue as well is nicely padded throughout so it's very very comfortable up here uh, and that sort of just sits into the ground sits in nicely and just works and then because the midsole uh, from anyway enables you to have more ground feel <clears throat> the shoe enables me to have more ground feel it's uh yeah it just it just feels good it, it works it's sort of 
I guess it's kind of reminiscent to uh, Nike Wild, my Nike Wild 7. Uh, the midsoles to me feel the same. That sort of React sole, the React midsole in the Nike is kind of similar to this one here in the Salomon. Um, and I think because you have that sort of responsive ground feel too. So that's a good plus. But if you're looking for a shoe, I, yeah, the, the, the Wild Horse 7 is actually wider. So probably best for that one if you're going long, long, long. So that's pretty much it. So that's the review basically after two months. As I said, I haven't gone over 100 miles yet, but I will try and get to there pretty, pretty, you know, as soon as possible. Um, but I'm finding it comfortable. I'm finding the midsole still bouncy. I'm finding that contra grip really working nicely on, on pretty much all surfaces. Uh, the upper is very comfortable. Uh, I don't say, you know, if there was a little bit more width up here, that would be great. I don't know if they're going to do a, an Ultra Glide 2 or maybe the, uh, some sort of version wide. But the midsole is lovely, and the, and the overall feel is great. So, a bit more width maybe, I don't know, maybe a little bit more cushion or maybe they might change the formula slightly in the cushion. As I said, I haven't personally felt any sort of flattening out or deadening out, but I know I know the Ginger Runner has and a few other people have commented that it had, can flatten out. Maybe they might have just been hitting it too hard on, on sort of harder surfaces or whatever, but on softer trails, I think it should be fine. Um, as I said, I wouldn't go too long on the, on the road and pavement and things, but for, for those sort of softer tracks and things, it should be fine. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I'm sort of, I'm what am I? So 78 kilos and six foot one, 78 kilos. Uh, so I'm not the lightest, but you know this this midsole is holding up. Maybe if you're lighter, it might hold up longer. I don't know, but we'll have to um, have to see. But so far, after sort of three, well, yeah, two two and a bit months, I'm really really impressed. Really liking the shoe. Um, you know, is it a shoe that I'd wear all the time? Nope, because I can't because my my feet are a little bit too wide. So if you do have wide feet, but is it a shoe that I look forward to putting my foot into to go short and faster for maybe an hour or an hour and two? Yes. So it's a great shoe to have in rotation because it's lightweight, it's fast, um, for me anyway. So there we have it. There's my review of the Ultra Guide. Um, I'm gonna shut up here and um, close it down. So thanks for watching, hope you liked it. If you did, please click that like button. If you haven't already, please do subscribe to the channel. Um, yeah, so now it's just in regards to what I've been up to. Things have been a bit quiet on my YouTube front for the last sort of couple of weeks, um, just because I've had the school holidays and yeah, I'm just finally they go back to school tomorrow, which enables me to have a little bit more, uh, a bit more time on my hands, which is good. Um, and also hopefully better get some more longer runs in. But yeah, running's going well, training's good. Uh, I'm doing a bit more cycling, actually, especially in the woods, some more trail rides. Um, I'm really loving sort of that gravel bike ride feel. It's uh, that's anyway, that's a whole nother video. So anyway, thanks for watching. See you soon. Take care. Bye bye.